Hello, everybody, and welcome to Two Goals. I'm Katia. And I'm Maria Laura. From Mexico to Switzerland. Today's guest is a natural and certified musician who actually performs in stadiums. No, we are not talking about the music star. The stadiums are the same, but the music is other. With events such as FIFA on the 70s, on the 20s, and senior tournaments, both men's and women's, Women's Champions League and Olympic Games in the curriculum, we are happy to introduce you to Marily Flores Martinez, Women's Football Tournament Manager at FIFA, who is here today to share a pathway from Zacatecas to Zurich. Marily, welcome to our podcast. Hello, thank you very much. I'm very pleased to be here. Marily, to start this interview, uh, the little Marily fell in love with football and played as a midfielder back then in Mexico. Can you tell us how this football passion started and why you were a midfielder? Do you think unconsciously since then you, you like organizing the game like you do today? Hey, w well, to be honest, I don't know where the passion for football came because I just started liking it since I remember. Actually, no one in my family really played or had some uh, influence on football on me. So, I don't know, it just came by itself. And uh, now that you ask that question, I've never thought about it, about the position <laughs> as midfielder. But actually, yeah, I'm a very um, organized person. I like to plan everything I do in my uh, work life and also in my personal life. So maybe that position also talks about it and I really enjoyed it when I played as midfielder. I also played in other positions like defender or um, uh, forward but I really like this uh, position in the middle sometimes as a nine, sometimes as a ten, sometimes as a six. So yeah maybe it has to do something with that. Marely, even though you, you mentioned that you love football since you were little You actually ended up going to college, going to university to study a bachelor in music, which is really, really curious uh, for us. What has music added to your profile? And tell us a bit about how important is multidisciplinarity for a professional. Yeah, well, I did a bachelor in, in piano performance and also at the same time I was doing bachelor in marketing. So I had to divide my day between the two majors and every free time that I had in the marketing uh, major, I used to study my piano uh, lesson. Um, it was an interesting path because in terms of uh, abilities, I always wanted to actually organize uh, events at school when I was in marketing. But I didn't have time because I had to go to uh, piano performance uh, classes. So I was with this wish my whole college uh, time And finally, when I graduated, actually one year before graduation, I was invited to a project that mixed uh, music with uh, marketing. So I organized chamber music concerts. I was um, leading the team to organize three seasons per year. So one season in the fall, one season in the spring, and one summer festival. And for me, it was a great experience to have this opportunity to organize concerts and also some talks before the concerts for people to understand better what the concert was about and then eventually I was also playing football in my university team in the state uh, team as well representing my state of Zacatecas and yeah eventually I got to some other tournaments but I think that it was always a mix between football music and I love this mix to be honest. <laughs> It's connected. It's connected everywhere. Um, now moving on to another field um, of studies. You said in an interview before, instead of organizing concerts and recitals, I decided that I wanted to organize a soccer World Cup. And after your studies in Mexico that you talked about, you moved to Switzerland to study sports administration and technology. Why this transition? Well, yes. In fact, I wanted to, instead of organizing concerts, I wanted to organize sport events. So I started looking on the internet about places where I could do this um, activity. And uh, I was already one semester in the U.S. And by coincidence, I had a sport management course, but at that time I wasn't really thinking about it. 
but then this passion for organizing um, things uh, grew and also the passion to be all the time in sports led me to find the AISTS master in Lausanne. And uh, for me, it was very important not only to get the theory, uh, also it was to be um, hands-on and have some practice after my master's. So this was the decision that I had to do in terms of which master I would like to do. And AISTS had this internship uh, as mandatory as a requirement to do so you could graduate. So this part was so interesting for me and I also contacted other Mexicans who did the same because it's not the same if, if you come from uh, overseas or if you're already in Europe. So I wanted to see how they were doing and a couple of them told me, yeah, I mean, with the internship, uh, we got to stay here and we are having a very good practical experience. So that's why I applied to the master's in Lausanne. And uh, yeah, I learned uh, many things about the Olympic movement and also the sports industry. So I felt that it was the right move if I wanted to organize one day uh, football competitions or international tournaments. Marely, I'm just uh, curious in some South American trying to, to accomplish this path in football. How, how was your first impression of you moving into Europe? I mean, was it hard at first to try and, and abort this new experience, these new cultures, and just get in from outside this really Latin American culture at first? Well, it was, I think, I like a lot Switzerland. I like that um, you can know at what time you are arriving, at what time you need to depart. I mean, all this planning thing just comes naturally for me and I think I'm in the right country. <laughs> because I, I really like how organized it is, how calm it is, how safe it is. So I think that I found my place in the world here. So I'm very happy to be around here. But yeah, culture is very different. And to compensate a bit that um, difference, uh, I have some Mexican friends as well, friends from Latin America who speak Spanish from time to time. So also to share some uh, experiences as uh, expats and how we approach things as Mexicans in Switzerland. So it's very interesting and it's very nice because uh, Zurich and Lausanne are very international cities. So you can really interact with people from many different countries and learn from cultures even if you're just going for lunch, you always uh, learn something from another country. So I really like it. And living now your study pathway and moving on to your professional career, one of the top events that you have worked with was the London Olympic Games in 2012. Can you tell us about your role there? And, and also if you can give us a clue about the Olympic environment or, or if you prefer how you describe the Olympic spirit. Well, yeah, I had this very nice opportunity while I was working for the International Boxing Association in Lausanne to go to the Olympic Games. In fact, we were about 45 and they only took 12 employees. Uh, I was mostly working in the competition part and also for the test event, I was in charge of the medal ceremony of the participants. During the Olympic Games was mostly the venue operations and also dealing with the officials like uh, organization of services for the referees and the more uh, competition related part came when we were in charge of the weigh-in of the boxers so basically every morning you need to go to the olympic village which was an amazing experience to, to be there every other day and uh, supervise that the weigh-in procedure where they need to meet the weight is done properly Um, administration with uh, the registration and the papers and the flow of the boxers and just being in that uh, environment is one of the best experiences of my life really the Olympic spirit the fact that the, all the athletes meet there um, so, ma so many sports um, athletes being there together and sharing the same values it was a really really special experience for me and if I would have the chance to experience another Olympic Games I would be more than happy to do that. Well I, I can barely imagine that <laughs> I have always wanted to to attend I mean for now I would love to attend uh, to Olympic Games but um, since we're we are all football lovers let's move into football um, then after the Olympic Games you also took part as a venue venue operations and volunteer management for the FIFA under 70s Women's World Cup in Costa Rica 
how important was this event for you? I mean, since it was kind of like the beginning of you jumping into mayor football, governing bodies, and what kind of things you learned during this event? Yeah, well, my goal when I started the Masters was to work one day in UEFA and or FIFA. So for me, it was very important to learn how FIFA does things. So I got involved uh, by uh, own initiative in the Women Under-17 World Cup in Costa Rica. At that time, I was in Mexico. I didn't have a job, so I thought that, well, Costa Rica is close by. I can, I have some funds to, to go there for one month. And then there, I my main objective was to learn how FIFA organizes the World Cup and also which are the needs, uh, which, what kind of characteristics they are looking into people that work for them. In this uh, regard, I was very open to work in any areas. So I was in one of the stadiums in Saprissa, which is in Tibas, it's close to San Jose. And it was advantageous because I could see many areas interacting and many different angles of the competition on how it happens, how it's organized. I was also trying to learn from everything and on non-match days, I was in the stadium early and then I left in the evening when everything was set up for the match day. I really learned a lot and I think it was a good experience that helped me eventually to, to get into the place I wanted to be. Yeah, and, and actually you were lucky because after this, you, you moved to, to Switzerland like permanently and then you work in match operations at UEFA for both men and women's competitions. What are your main insights about what you learned there? Well, uh, in principle, I would say that UEFA is a great school. It's very well organized uh, company. It's, uh, for example, in boxing, we I could see the scale between uh, other sports and uh, well, the sports I've worked at and football because. Well, in boxing, we had one book of regulations with uh, equipment, with uh, competition, with uh, medical, with referee operations. At UEFA, I had one book for every single area. So I could see the dimension of it. And also, I learned a lot from my colleagues and all uh, people who I worked with. I also tried to get involved in as many events as I could. And in two years, I achieved to do the seasons of the Women's Champions League. The youth tournaments, there are, they are four, two for women, two for men. I got involved also in the youth league as a venue director and did administration work for Champions League and Europa League. So for me, those two years were full of knowledge and full of uh, discover the football world. And it, it's really another dimension of organization. And yeah, and after UEFA, you moved to the next level in the football pyramid. Uh, in 2016, you joined the major football governing body, FIFA. You performed there as the Women's Football Tournament Manager, organizing tournaments such as FIFA Women's World Cup in the 70s and the 20s, beach soccer, youth cups, and more recently, the FIFA Women's World Cup 2019 in France. And with, with all these tournaments, you kind of covered it all, basically. So can you describe to us what is your daily routine what kind of responsibilities are related to your role? Yeah, sure. Uh, the first thing I do when I arrive in the office is to open my inbox mm -hmm. and see if there is any urgent emails or any urgent matters that need my attention or solution. After that, I categorize it and I schedule a time to, to work on those activities that require more concentration. Then when we go more to the operational side is to keep in contact with the local organizing committees to follow up on what we are preparing. For example, in this case, it was mostly stadium inspections, stadium maps. So we receive this data from them and then we are trying to analyze what they sent to us and give them feedback. Sometimes it, this feedback also requires me to coordinate with other functional areas in the organization, which I find very, very interesting because I, I'm not an expert on many areas. So I contact my colleagues who are experts and I learned a lot from them. So when we have this consolidated feedback, we send it back to the local organizing committee so they can keep preparing. Uh, we also perform stadium inspections. So we go on site once the country is appointed and we 
make sure that they understand what we need for the tournament. And in the years leading to the World Cups, we um, update and we also are following up on how they are doing, the problems that they face, the challenges that might arise, also some risk management stuff. And while we are on site during the tournament, we focus more on the main deliveries, on that the stadiums are ready for the teams to come, and the match operations, which is uh, mainly what happens on the pitch, and to have it properly uh, running smoothly. And uh, it's very interesting because at that time, some months leading to the tournament, we also interact with the teams who are participating. So that also brings you another side of the competition, what the teams need, what are their expectations, and you will also interact with many different cultures, which I find very, very interesting, very, very nice. Yeah, and your job, basically, as you, you said, consists in working during years um, to project and execute a tournament that will last maximum one month only. So all the hard work during these years is concretized in one month, where you probably work day and night uh, under stress, I bet, to be sure of everything going on there. So can you tell us uh, what kind of tasks you perform during the tournaments and how is the environment of the team? Yeah, well, for example, for the Women's World Cup, I, we started the operational planning and we were only three people, you know, and it's amazing how the whole process goes until you are more than 200 people working in the different stadiums and different training sites. So uh, then for the tournament, what we do is that we train our match directors. These match directors are the people who are sitting on the fourth official bench. So they supervise organization of the turn of the matches. They welcome the teams. They make sure the teams deliver the documents they need before the matches. If there is any changes, uh, they also register that. If there is any issues that arise during after the match, we also get reported about that. Um, then we follow up. We follow up with daily reports. So they send us every day what they need and what they face and how they solve it. And if they need our support, we are always on call during the whole tournament. So we are available basically 24/7 to answer their queries, wow. which is super fun. I mean. When you like your job, it's not difficult. You don't feel it as a job. It's really an enjoyable experience because you learn every day something new because in events, there is always something that you didn't uh, plan for and then you need to solve it anyway on the spot. So it gets very interesting and very fast-paced, but at the end, it's a great satisfaction because it's a teamwork of many, many people, whoever was at the very beginning, whoever just joined uh, one week before the tournament. So it's a very um, good example of teamwork and how we need to support each other. And obviously at the end, it's a very nice, uh, satisfactory moment when uh, the winners um, leave the trophy and then everyone celebrates. And it's, it's really a, a journey and it's very enjoyable. Well, you people out there, you just heard that if you want to work in events management, <laughs> you, must, you must pay the price for that. But, but it, is, it is incredible that what you just mentioned. If you like it, you, you, don't, you don't care. I mean, you just want to, to be committed to the hard work, you know. Yeah, for example, I know that one month before we go on site to the tournament, I will work every single day of the month, you know, even Saturday, Sunday. Uh, but this, it is like that. I mean, when you are uh, reaching the date of the event, it's, it's a lot of work and some things you can only do that at that time because of their own nature. But I know that it's going to be worth it. Everything is going to be worth it. <laughs> Amazing. So you also, you also worked at the Men's uh, FIFA World Cup 2018 in Russia as pretty much ceremonies coordinator. Can you please tell us like some differences and maybe also similarities to deploy both men's and women's workouts? Yeah, the principles are the same, like stadium inspections, uh, plans of readiness, operational plans. The principles are the same, it's just the scale is different. Um, now with the women's work in France, it was a very good milestone in order to um, try to have the same or at least 
more exposure, more richness, more people in the stadiums or people watching. It was a really important milestone for for the sport. And when you can compare is when you look at the numbers of number of volunteers for Men's World Cup, number of volunteers for Women's World Cup, uh, uh, investment of governments, investment of clubs in, in tournament. It's really some gap there, but it's normal. I mean, women's football is growing now and also it's trying to reach uh, different standards than before, which is good because it's, it marks an evolution. Um, in terms of stadiums, sometimes when men's World Cup have more stadiums, so you need more people. Uh, also, men's football is more popular, so it's, uh, you have maybe better uh, TV figures. It's it's different, but I think that uh, we are not, um, yeah, we are not trying to catch up. It's just uh, women's football is a product that is evolving at, and that is getting more exposure more and more, but we still need to do more on that side. I mean, people need to get to know better the players so they can relate to something. And uh, many people who are in FIFA and outside of FIFA who are passionate of women's football and knowledgeable, they are doing these efforts to, to make it grow, which I think is it's very good. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, it, it's been accomplished uh, from what we, we've seen. And as you said, it's another product. It's the same game, different product. And exactly. moving, moving on now to, to um, specifically women's football tournaments, we all have the perception that, that of course, last year's uh, tournament was a success. The numbers are out there to prove it. And definitely FIFA raised the game to the next level, as well as the expectations for the next one. So a bit of pressure here. But in, in your per personal perspective, as part of the team uh, who organized the tournament, how big was FIFA Women's World Cup 2019 to you? Is there a milestone that you would like to share with us? For me, it was a very important event, mostly because I could see the whole preparations since uh, we started the operational planning. So I could see how all the many areas interact. I also faced uh, issues that I had to solve during the planning. And for me, I learned a lot of planning, operations, interactions between different areas, uh, tournament time uh, issues. I also saw how it was growing with the number of people of getting involved in this tournament. For me, it was a, professionally speaking, it was a very important milestone. And uh, it was my, yeah, w one of the top uh, tournaments that I have done. So, because I was involved in all the stages of the of the planning and uh, that was very, very important for me. So, Marely, I already mentioned the, my, my dream work <laughs> to, be, to be able to attend the uh, Olympic Games and they are coming up. So do you think you will be involved with them? Or, and we are also curious about how FIFA established the bridge with the Olympic Committee. Well, uh, at, at this moment, I'm not involved and we are focusing more on our tournaments uh, next, at the beginning of next year, which are the women under 20 World Cup and women under 17. Um, in terms of the bridge, yeah, I mean, IOC, they uh, have contact with the international federations in order to understand their technical requirements. So this is a link where they are not experts in every sport, so they need to contact the international federations of every sport to understand what they need, what they expect. And then also IOC and the organizing, uh, Olympic Games organizing committees they are in charge of other services like accommodation, uh, Olympic Village, transportation. So FIFA is not the whole responsible for all the services to the teams. This is mostly IOC and the OGOX. And then uh, FIFA takes care of the appointment of the officials that they want to, to have in the Olympic Games according to their experience in other FIFA tournaments. So they know what uh, the rules are. And this is in very uh, barely scale what i can tell you because i have not involved in olympic games with fifa but i was with boxing so i understand a bit the the relationship and how they work together to make the football competition happen thank you for that <laughs> beforehand mm -hmm. for clarifying yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> and uh, marley during this conversation we've seen you studied and work worked in different fields 
You studied music, technology, events management. And if we look at the uh, football tournament, we have all these things together inside of the tournament experience. Do you reckon what you're doing today is the assemblage of everything which was part of your pathway until now? Yeah, I think that many skills that I learned organizing concerts are transferable to sport events. So I think that across industries, you can always have things that you learn that will help you in the other industry. And also you can apply different things or think outside of the box of what you have seen in one place. You can apply it or you can also benchmark it with what you have done before. Also, some difference between UEFA and FIFA. I mean, some things that you can do in UEFA, you cannot do at FIFA because of the scale of, of the countries, the different cultures that need to interact to make it happen. Or sometimes the requirements are different uh, for, I don't know, uh, one country in a small country in a continent with another country in another continent. So it's really interesting to see how you can uh, take a step back and say, okay, this one, we can make it... Uh, similar this one doesn't really apply for the, for for what you want to do so i think that at this point i have a nice overview of how a continental uh confederation works and how the fifa uh works as well so for me it's also very very good and you can always transfer skills from other events from other industries ideas or benchmarks Marily, thank you so much. We like closing our, our show, our episode, always with, a, with an advice for people out there to try and, and fulfill their dreams. And in your case, it is really interesting because you, you, can, you have come so far from Zacatecas to Zurich. That's a long, long, long distance. <laughs> so please uh, let, our, let our audiences know how they can achieve that, how they can try and, and stay patient, work hard and identify the opportunities where they can contribute to do more for this game. Yeah, I would say that discover your passion and don't be afraid to follow what you really want because if you really want it, you're going to be able to be resilient and overcome all the challenges and obstacles that prevent you to get there. I would also say um, that the language skills help a lot when you want to work in an international uh, gover governing body or international organization. And another thing that I have learned is that, uh, yeah, learn from everything, learn everywhere, learn from everyone. So keep your mind open and also um, try to get new experiences in the field that you are, want to get into. Amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Marely, for accepting our invitation. Thank you to you. I'm very happy to be here and I hope it was uh, insightful for everyone. Everyone, this is Two Goals Podcast. Thank you so much for encouraging us to do more for this beautiful game. Remember that we're available on YouTube, on Spotify, and our Twitter and Instagram accounts at Two Goals Podcast. So there isn't any excuses for you to miss us. Keep working hard, keep breathing football, and see you next week. Thank you so much. <laughs>